Okay, so today we are going to study the mean field solution of the Ising model. We start from the Ising model Hamiltonian. H is minus J sum. This means nearest neighbors S i S j minus H sum of i S i. So we know the meaning of these terms. The J is the coupling constant and the H is the magnetic field. This is the coupling between neighboring spins and this is the magnetic field coupled to each of, of the spins. So according to the Bogolyubov idea, Bogolyubov inequality, we are going to split this Hamiltonian into two terms. The first one is H0 is given by the following expression. This is a sum over independent spins, so it's something that we can solve uh, quite easily. And the second part is the part which contains the interactions. It's minus j sum over ij si sj. Okay? Then we add minus h minus lambda sum of i si. So what we see is that e, they are both this. Both part depends on the parameter lambda, okay, but the sum of the two is h, which is independent on lambda. Okay, so we write this one as an h naught of lambda plus h1 of lambda. Okay, so what is the Bogolyubov inequality telling us? Uh, we can define now a variational free energy f of lambda as the f naught of lambda plus h1 naught. So what is this? Which is also depending on lambda the second. Okay. Okay. So the Bogolyubov inequality tells us that the best approximate of the free energy we can obtain by minimizing this f with respect of lambda. Okay. Of these two terms. One is the easy one, the F0 is the free energy of this system. Uh, okay? And this is H1, and the average with respect of naught is the average with respect of this Hamiltonian. Okay, let's start looking at the first Hamiltonian. We can calculate the partition function Z0, which is the sum over all the spins. So I have spin S1, which can take the value plus or minus 1. Sum of spin S2, which takes the value of plus or minus 1. So if I have n spins, this is what we want to calculate. Okay, And then exponential of minus beta H0, which becomes exponential of beta lambda sum of i S i. Okay, and so now what we see is that all these sums are factorizing uh, because the exponential of the sum of in spins is the product of exponentials. Uh, therefore, all these sums are identical, and I can write all this as one sum, okay, of exponential of beta lambda s, okay. to the nth power. And this is something that we have seen. Non this is a system of non-interacting spins. Okay? And this one I can also write two times hyperbolic cosine of beta lambda okay? to the nth power. Okay? This is the result of the first part of my calculation. Therefore, this free energy, the free energy, is given my minus, so I can write it here. So what I'm calculating is the first one, the free energy F naught of lambda is equal to minus kBT, the log of this, okay? The N comes out of the log, okay? So we have done the first part of the calculation, this calculation. So now I think I can erase this bottom line, 
uh, because this calculation is done, is a calculation of the partition function of non-interacting spins. And that you see here is n times the partition function of one spin. OK, so let's erase this. We remove this. Okay, and now we move on with the next part of the calculation. The next part of the calculation is the average over the interacting part. Okay. Good. So we have to average this one. Okay, this one is this term. So it contains two averages. The average over SI, SJ. So we write that the average of H1 with respect to the Hamiltonian 0 is minus J, the sum over nearest neighbors. Now be careful, this means nearest neighbors huh, of the product. This are two different symbols, okay? Minus h minus lambda sum of i and the average of si zero, okay? So now we have to calculate these averages. What what are they? Okay, this is the product of two spins, i and j are neighbors, and the average. But because we are averaging with respect to hum of this Hamiltonian. Huh, so uh, this S i S j with respect of 0, and this is Hamiltonian contains of non-interacting spins, the average of the product is equal to the product of averages. Because the spins are independent, OK? And moreover, this uh, it's independent on the index i or on the index j. Uh, because we have just seen the partition function is n times the partition function for one spin. Therefore, we can write this as S0, the average of one spin squared. Uh, later, I will remove the parentheses, but just to make it clear, we make the average of one spin squared. And the same here is SI0, it's just S. Okay. Therefore, we fill in now this information in here, and we get for this H1 not okay, we get this, we get the product of S average squared, okay, so we get minus J, okay, and let me write this, and I will explain you what it means. Okay. So the product of these two, this gives me the S naught squared. And just every of these gives me this term. I have to count how many there are. Uh, how many terms do I have in this sum? This sum is summing over all uh, neighboring spins. Okay, so if I am on a square lattice, each spin has four neighbors, okay? Namely, this pin has this neighbor, this neighbor, this neighbor, and this neighbor. So if I have, and I use the letter small z, do not confuse with the capital Z, to say how many neighbors there are of one spin. So if I have a square lattice, uh, these are four. So I can also write this two times the dimensional of dimensionality of the system. D is the dimensionality of the system. If I have the IZ model in one dimension, I get that every spin has two neighbors. Then Z is, D is one, then Z is equal to two. Here, Z is equal to four, okay? So N counts how many spins I have, and Z is the number of neighbors, but I, then I have to divide by two, otherwise I count double, okay? And the other term is minus h minus lambda n times the s0. Okay. Good. So 
we're almost there and now we have to uh, say what s0 the average of this is okay okay so if you remember the definition of Hamiltonian and here that is H naught there what is the a S zero uh, it's the average of the spin taking the value plus or minus one of S exponential of beta lambda S divided by the sum Mm, but this is nothing but the derivative with respect of beta divided by lambda by of the log of the partition function. Uh, which partition function? The partition function for one spin, which is two times hyperbolic cosine of beta lambda. Okay. So I, when I differentiate this partition function with respect of beta, I get lambda s out, therefore I have to divide by lambda. Okay. So you see that uh, this is uh, what we are looking for. And therefore, uh, this becomes the derivative of the log, the factor 2 uh, doesn't matter. Okay, this derivative of the log, uh, I rewrite it on top of... Uh, of this part, so if I differentiate the log, I get one over hyperbolic cosine, and in the numerator I get hyperbolic sine. So then I get the hyperbolic tangent here, if you do the calculation, of beta times lambda, okay? And this is our starting point for the next part of the calculation.